Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> as he said, my name is Marcella Powell. I'm 25 years old. And as I always state, in order for you to really get the effect that AMI, experience the effect that AMI had on my life, I have to tell you all how my life was before AMI, when I was at AMI, and where it is now. At the age of 12, I committed an action that I didn't know would affect my life for the rest of my life. Um, at the age of 12, I got my first charge with the, and I was, I was put in the Department of Juvenile Justice System. Um, that was a battery charge, and I didn't know that that one mistake would affect me five years later. So the judge, when I went to court, he put me, he placed me on probation. And he told me, you know, you have a year to complete this. Of course, I was expelled out of regular school and sent to an alternative school. So when I went to the alternative school, I was around more people who was kicked out and made, you know, ungood choices, not so good choices, you know. And it seemed I was born in a Christian home. My mom, my dad, my sister, my grandmother. My grandmother was a pastor. And, you know, living that life, you know, with a Christian life, is like everything you see that you're not supposed to do, it looks so interesting to you. <laughs> at least it did that to me. So being at the alternative school, you know, I see these kids acting out, you know, or, you know, just doing what they want to do. And I'm like, hmm, okay. So, you know, being around them, I kind of fell into the same thing that they were doing. So I started to act out. I started to, you know, disobey the teacher. So that one year probation turned into more. I, I got angry with myself at some point and I had a lot, a lot of anger built up inside of me. So I began to just fight. And I mean, people could, you could just tell me you don't like me for some reason. I'm like, okay, you know, let's fight. I was a fighter. I didn't care who it was. It could be a girl, a boy, and I'm going to be honest, it could even be a teacher, you know. And I mean, I just fought for some reason. And finally, when I was 13 years old, after getting a few more charges, I got, um, I got a possession of marijuana charge. And that actually took me back up into the front of the judge. And he said, okay, you know what I'm going to do with you? I'm going to send you away to a program. So at the age of 13, I was sent away to a moderate risk program in Okeechobee, Florida. And I lived in Pensacola, Florida. So Okeechobee, Pensacola, that's about 10 hours away from each other. So I was 10 hours away from my mother, my sister, my grandmother, the people that I loved. And I thought that that would get me, you know, in line. Like, okay, you need to do these six months and get out of here. So while I was at the program, they taught me discipline but at the same time, being in that program, it's like they treated me as a criminal. So someone treating me as a criminal, it made me act like one because I'm like, you're treating me this way, so why not adapt the mentality that you have, you know, already labeled me as? So that's what I did. Um, that six month program turned into a year and a half and I actually stayed in that program a year and a half. After a year and a half, I'm like, okay, Marcella, you really need to get yourself together for you being here three, four years. So finally, after a year and a half, I got out of the program, and I was very, very happy to be home with my mom and dad and my grandmother. And thinking, you know, okay, after this year and a half, I would get myself together, but I reoffended, and I got back into more trouble. And this time, it's for fighting. It was for numerous of things, and not bragging at all, but just showing you what a difference I've changed. I have to tell you this, that my face sheet as a juvenile, it was charged 17 times, and um, 11 of those charges was new law violations. And it's nothing I'm proud of, but at the same time, I wouldn't change it for anything in the world because it's made me the successful woman I am today. So after I reoffended. Um, at 14, I got sent to a different charter school. You know, basically different charter schools after different charter schools. These, I know the judge was like, this girl ain't finna get it together. So finally, they, um, at the age, I'm skipping a few years, at the age of 17, I had a review, and they were actually going to send me to a high-risk program. As you all know, who's familiar with Department of Juvenile Justice, that's a year and up. Excuse me. <laughs> that's a year and up. So AMI kids, um, this guy named Doc, Mr. Terrence, he, um, he came to this meeting, this review. He's like, hey, I'm here with AMI kids, and I'm, I'm, going, I'm here for you. I have your back. 
This guy never met me in my life. The only thing he had was at least 50 pages of paper with Marcella, and this is what she's done, and this is what he's done. But when the state attorney came in there, this man from AMI Kids, he talked up for me like this man has knew me, known me all my life. And I was looking at him like, yep, I'm, I'm really going to do good this time. Yeah, I'm, this, is what I'm, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm going to do. Yes, thank you. Yes, I agree with him. You know, I'm like anything to not send me to this one-year, two-year program because I can't handle that right now. <laughs> so the state attorney walked out, you know, and he was like, I got your back. I got your back. You know, his saying was, I got your back like a backpack. And sure enough, did he have my back like a backpack. So I had a court date. Um, I don't know if it was a week or two down the road or what, but this same guy who had my back come to this court date with me. And the judge said, you know, Miss Powell, I can adjudicate you as an adult because you're 17 years old. And I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> and, um, but he said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you to AMI Kids and you need to be there every day on time. You miss a day, then you're gone. You're gone. I'm hauling you. I'm adjudicating you as an adult. You're going over there to the big jail. I started AMI Kids. I, when I went there, every teacher was coming up to me and they were like, hey, welcome to A and my kids. What's your name? Okay. You know, I met with my caseworker. He made an individual plan for me. What worked for Sue didn't work for me. You know, what worked for Tom didn't work. What worked for Mr. O.B., it wasn't going to work for me. <laughs> they made an indiv in individual plan that was focused on me, my needs, my goals. And they said, okay, in six months, you're going to accomplish all of this. In six months, this is what you're going to do. And I'm like, okay, yep, yeah, because I want to get out of this place, you know, so I'm agreeing with anything. Hey, you just got me um, away from a year or two that I could have been down the road, so yes, sir, whatever you say. <laughs> so the next few days, the next few weeks, as weeks pass by, you know, A and my kids, even with, I hated math. Math was a subject I didn't like. I, th I thought it was useless besides adding and subtracting. And this uh, Miss Lisa was the teacher at that time in Pensacola. And she t told me, you know, hey, in order for you to take this test, you're going to have to get your math grades up because apparently that was my weak subject. So every day, instead of going home, she sat down and took her time in her room and pulled me aside for 30 minutes and actually took her time and taught me math. Days that I didn't want, I just sat in the class and I didn't, I'm not going to lie to you, I didn't say anything. I'm like, she was like, Marcella, we're not going nowhere until you do some of this or do some of that. And she, my, my thing is she worked with me. She helped me. They had patience. Even the staff, um, when I was having a bad day, they, they genuinely cared about you. They were like, are you okay? What's wrong? Are you okay? Are you having a bad day? Talk to me. And I've talked to people in my life who, you know, I talked to them and then, you know, the next person, yeah, girl, she told your mama this. I'm like, wow, I'm talking to you. But that when they talk to me, you know, it stayed between me and them unless it was something to harm me or someone else. And that's what I liked about it because it built that trust level um, that apparently I needed to get me to that next step. So while I was at A and my kids, they helped me with my anger. I mean, my anger was really bad. And they really helped me decrease my anger problem that I had, my authority, my rebellion that I had. They helped me with them and God. They helped me, you know, decrease that so I could be a more productive citizen. After I, I finally graduated from A and my kids um, and received my high school diploma, and after, after <laughs> thank you. <laughs> After I graduated from AI Kids, I was like, okay, what am I going to do with myself? So I decided to go to Pensacola State College. It was junior at the time. And I took up this carpentry program. And it's so funny now because that same carpentry program, it was through Youth Bill at the time. Apparently, this is the vocational class that you all have now. So I'm like, that would have been so nice to have then. And I could not have wasted that year. But I'm happy. I blame it on Mr. Roby. <laughs> but after I finished that, I'm like, okay, what do I want to do with my life? So I actually um, started with strategic restaurants, and I became a assistant manager with a restaurant. Um, something I needed surf safe certification again, and I obtained that on my own. And it would have been so nice to obtain it with AMI then. So I'm so happy you all are, you know, getting these vocational trades together. <laughs> but um. After that, I'm like, you know, this isn't what I want to do. 
And after I changed my life, you know, I started going to church and um, I'm so thankful for Dr. Houston being here today because she's really inspired my life. I mean, the way she walks and lives, it inspires me every day to be a great person, to be a more beautiful woman inside and out. And I was like, you know, I really want to help kids. I want to give back. And, you know, especially going to visit AMI kids and talking with the youth, they give me the opportunity, especially um, Mr. Jeffrey, AMI Pensacola, whoop, whoop. <laughs> he gives me the opportunity co to come back and speak with the kids. Um, and it, it touches my heart because my heart really goes out to kids just because I've been to a place of giving up. I've been to a place where people told me I would never be anything. I'd never amount to anything. However, you know, letting that be my stepping stone and building me to a stronger woman, I decided to start a nonprofit organization. And it's called Motivate the Youth Incorporation. And what it does, it, it works in the community to decrease crime rate, decrease violence, anger, <laughs> which I had once had. And it tries to uplift the community and make, you know, just bring together young people and build a stronger community. So that's what I do now. I also do motivational speaking. And I think you know, if it wasn't for AMI impacting my life in such a way they did at the age that I needed that. Like I said, at, when I was at AMI Kids, I was 17 years old. So I'm, you know, going through this phase of childhood and finna cross over into adulthood. And they really gave me what I needed. So I want to thank AMI for everything they've done. Um, the founder, um, judge, <laughs> thank you for founding this place because if it wasn't for you and some more people, then it never would have been created. And I'm really thankful for the opportunity to speak here today. And in my closing, I just, I always say in my closing that um, people ask, does this program work? And I say yes. And they say, um, so people really can change. And I say time change, weather change, and people can too if you just give them a chance. So thank you all very much for the opportunity to be up here today. Thank you.